Hi, this is Ramesh Yarabali. In this video, I'll discuss the scope and persistence of variables slash functions in C programming. So let's first define these two terms. Uh, the word scope can be defined as where a variable slash function is accessible. By accessibility, we mean if it's a variable, then whether it can be read, written, and so on, read, write. If it happens to be a function, we want to know whether it can be called. The second perspective, second term is persistence. Persistence is when a variable comes to existence and how long it lives. That is, at what point does it cease to exist? So these are our two terms. So again, the key words are where and when. And I'd like to think of them as uh, another way of uh, looking at them uh, is by thinking of them in terms of space and time. In fact, we will do exactly that. We will use time and we will use space are as our two dimensions when we discuss variables so on this on this this is our time axis and this is our space axis that is this is our scope this here is less scope and this is more scope as the scope gets wider and wider, which means it's accessible in many more places. Less means it's restricted. And on the time axis, we think of it as temporary. Or short term. Or permanent towards the end of the spectrum it's permanent or long term so we'll come back to this picture in just a second so let's let's define some variables and and we will put them on this axis in just a second so first i'm going to um, refer to this example this example is uh, will be provided to you as a starter pro project it's called scope persistence um, in it's not part of your e 319k where right now but it will be added to uh, as a project so you'll see this is the project that i'm going to be looking at um, so the project itself is uh, scope persistence and i will mainly discuss a few of the modules in here so let's start with uh with our main so we have let's say i have a main main dot c let's say i declare a way i have an int main right like so so we know that we can declare variables we've been doing this all along so if i declare a variable here let's say i call this i'm actually gonna uh, declare, declare a variable here called title and this title will be a character pointer 
and maybe I will write this as some string doesn't matter what it is I declare it and initialize it that's a title this is an example of a variable that is global in nature that is it's accessible here and if there is another function in here there were an other function somewhere in here let's say there is some void function of some kind then this variable is also accessible in here what is more in this example that i'm going to show you we have another file here called logger dot c and this logger.c has several functions in it. We'll get to those functions as we go along. But one of the functions here is a logger display function. And this logger display function doesn't take anything, doesn't return anything, uh, but it makes use of this global variable because it prints a message out and this message out where it, where it prints is, is going to be accessing this variable, which is this variable called title. So title is accessible here, title is accessible here, and title is accessible here. Not that we will use them in all the places, but if you choose to, you can access them. Now, here's a variable. Let's say I have a variable internally here, uh, variable which is uh, uint32 underscore t variable i. This variable here is a local variable. That is, its scope is restricted between here and here. So its scope is limited to just from being accessible from here to here. Whereas this global variable it's accessible everywhere. Its scope is the entire project. This guy is, gl is global and his, his scope is the entire project. This local variable scope is just the curly braces from here to here. So we can have variables in our functions, in our, in our files. For example, I will define a variable somewhere in logger.c. Maybe I have, and, and this, in this particular example, I'm going to declare a uint8 underscore t, a frequency array here. And this frequency array will turn out to be of certain number of uh, e entries and we'll worry about that later, but it's some max val. So it's an array. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to define this, but I'd like to restrict its scope just to this file. So by putting a word static in front of it. So what is static? The static, when applied to a variable that is outside of any function, is has the connotation of being global, but it's global, but its scope is only restricted to the file. The file which here happens to be logger.c. So I can access it here. I can access it if there were another function. In fact, I have a function here called uh, uh, a function called logger init. Init function. And in this init function, it doesn't matter what this function does, but I can access this here also. However, I cannot access it here or here because of the keyword static here. So it's global in scope, but only global to that file. Here is another function. I have a function here and let's, and this happens to be a function called logger track function. 
and we'll not worry about what it does. I'll show you the code in its entirety in just a second, but there's a function here. Now I declare a variable here and this variable is going to be something called first. And what is more, let me give myself a little space and change the color here. Uh, it's going to be the variable called first. And this first happens to be uh, uint 8 underscore t. Just by looking at it, it looks like a local variable. Its scope is restricted to these curly braces. Now, I'm going to word, put the word static in front of it. And I'll tell you what this does. The word static in front of a variable when declared inside a function gets a, a scope which is restricted to this still. So it is still local. So this variable is still local and its scope is the curly braces again, these curly braces. But this is where we bring in the concept of persistence. Well, persistence asks the question, how long, when does it come to life and when does it cease to exist? So let's visit each of these, these variables in terms of persistence. So first, the first variable, which is the global variable, this one, its persistence is, it comes into existence at the start of the program and ceases to exist when the, when the program ends. Whereas this variable, which is a local variable, its persistence is on entry of the, on entry of this, the, of this function and, and ceases to exist. So, comes to on entry and on exit it ceases to ex it 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 is no longer in use so lives only while we are executing this so it comes on entry right created on entry on entry and and ceases to exist ceases on exit. The same thing can be told about, about this local variable also. It's created on entry, right? It is created on entry. But here's the interesting thing. It doesn't, it doesn't stop exist. It doesn't quit on exit. It only quits at the end, that is when the program ends. So it is static, which means it gets a permanent allocation, but it's permanent only after it is allocated. So by end, we mean by end, we mean it's a permanent allocation. This is a permanent allocation. Now, how about our other variable which we missed out here, which is this variable, this blue variable, frequency. The frequency variable also has a scope and its, sorry, its persistence, and its persistence is start to end. So the program starts and the program ends. And so how do we get this persistence? We get the persistence because in each of these cases, this is actually allocated in RAM. This is also allocated in RAM. This here also is allocated in RAM the, because it is persistent and it is permanent. Whereas the only only variable here that's not allocated in RAM is this variable, which is, is the local variable i, which is allocated in 
on the stack. So we can also make functions themselves be static or, or uh, non-static. So for example, if I were to make this function here a static function, which actually is a static function in the example, which means that I can call it, I call, I can call logger in it. I can use, I can call logger in it here. Actually, in fact, I'm going to call it inside here. But I cannot call it here. So for example, if I try to do logger in it here, it's going to fail because I made it static. What this static does is again, it restricts this function just to this file. So let's go back in this picture and try to fill in our, our various things. So in the time space continuum, if you will, um, we have our local variables which sit here. These are local variables that are permanent. These are static local variables. Because they persist. Whereas we have our global variables here, but global only to the file. In that their scope is not as, it's more than local variables, but it's not as much as what is next coming in this picture, which is global variables that are global to the project. So they come to existence and they live from time zero till the end of time. So all these live till the end of time. Whereas this guy, he ceases to exist, exit, exist as, as soon as his, his curly braces, wherever his curly braces end. So that's our, a temporary, what we mean by temporary. So in our case, our, uh, let's fill all of them in here. Um, so our, uh, I'm going to use a different color just to get things. This first, the variable first is here. The variable I is here. Um, the frequency is here and our uh, title is here. We can look at our project now and see what we are talking about. So I am simply going to show you what this uh, does. So we have a local variable here and I'm, I put some comments to explain. Here is the program title, which happens to be the string, which is global and permanent persistence and it's allocated in the RAM. And there is logger here, which has many, many several functions. And I didn't discuss all of them, but let's take a look at what they are. Uh, we have our uh, frequency array, which is static, which means it's static, which which restricts its scope just to the just to the um, file itself, which is the logger file. So let's go here and let's uh, let's do this. I will grab this from here, and we will see that here is a variable which happens to be a static variable so this guy makes it local to file the file is the logger.c file and we have a static function here which is also local to the file whereas we have a function here this function here happens to be a global function and we will see how it became global in just a second because we are making it accessible to other files as well here is a here is a here is a variable which was first, which is static, but it is still permanent. So these are static locals. First is a static local. Uh, in, this, in this simple example, what you see me doing here is I have a lo static local variable called first. I declared it as, as, as being equal to zero. So when I enter, this function, it gets a value of zero and it persists, which means that if I call it a second time and a third time and fourth time, it will still, 
have persist its old value. The first time I come around, it's gonna have a value of zero. So when it's zero, I'm gonna initialize my module. My module needs initialization, which is a frequency array where I'm gonna make all of my entries in my frequency array be zero. But if you call me a second time, I'm not gonna do that initialization, but I remembered in this variable that I have already been called. So I can use a static local for that. So I hope this explains what, what we are doing. Uh, I'd urge you to play around with this project. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple project. All it really is doing is uh, when we run this project, uh, I am tossing a bunch of random numbers and the random numbers had been generated in assembly. We'll talk about the C assembly mix. Um, but it's generating a, a hundred numbers. And when I run the numbers, uh, I'm displaying a histogram of that. So zeros, uh, there are 14 zeros, one, uh, nine ones, and so on. And I'm also displaying them nicely uh, by putting a number of stars like a histogram. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.